was given the table. And the first thing to notice about it is that it tells us in the table that we have the relative volatility between the adjacent components. So we know that that is our A to B, that is our B to C, and that is our C to D relative volatility. Okay? So what we have to do is separate these four components. So in our first distillation column, we know that we've only got three potential separations we can actually make just using simple distillation columns. Okay? So we can either split this between our A and B component, or we can we can split between our B and our C component, or we can split between our C and D component. So with simple distillation columns, that's the only three choices that we have for that first distillation column. So if we look at our heuristics, we can start to narrow down some of these potential separations. So are there any heuristics that point to this top choice being a favourable separation? Yes? Favour, yeah, so favour the direct sequence. So that one is a potential winning sequence. So what about the middle one, the split between B and C? Yeah, but we're, we're just yeah we're just trying to narrow down out of those choices at the moment. So it does apply. So yeah, so not doing the most difficult separation first, basically accounts for them. Yeah. Um, so it's it's potentially veering towards a 50-50 split. It's not obviously perfect. Uh, it's what it's 70-30, uh, but it's still a lot better than say 9-95. So potentially, let's say we'll say potentially on that one, and we'll have to see the next sequences to see if the heuristic rules join up with that. So what about the bottom one, separating between C and separating between C and D? So are there any heuristic rules that either say that's a good separation or a bad separation? Yeah, so bad. So which one? So uh, do the most difficult separation last. So between C and D, we have our smallest relative volatility, so that's the most difficult separation. So we really don't want to be doing that first. Okay? So we think about our top strand. We then basically have we then basically have two choices. So we can either separate B and C or separate our C and D. Okay? So any rules for separating B first? Yeah. Yeah. Direct. Yeah. The most largest. So yeah, direct, largest component. Okay, so that looks pretty promising. Any reasons why we broadly <coughs> wouldn't want to separate C and D? <coughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's most difficult, still the most difficult separation. Okay? So 
that leaves us just with our top one to separate C and D. Uh, so that top sequence looks promising, and it's in fact the direct sequence all the way through. But what we've also done is we've actually left the most difficult separation to last, and as soon as possible, we've removed the largest fraction of our component. So that top one is quite promising. So the only other option we had is potentially the middle option. And that would just involve us doing an A and B separation and a C and D separation. Okay. In this case, A to B and C to D are again getting near equimolar splits. Not perfect, but it's getting near there. You're also doing the most difficult separation towards the end. So, potentially, this middle sequence is your sort of next most favorable option. So if you were going to investigate two, you would certainly do this top strand, but then you might do this middle one as a potential as well. So what I wanted to do today is to go over the E1 tutorial question, but this time to go over the complex or thermally coupled arrangements that we can possibly have for this sequence of materials. <laughs> so, when you looked at this yesterday, were there any thermally coupled separations that immediately stood out to you as might be one of the best options to separate this type of feed? A prefractionator, yeah. So what, what made you think prefractionator? Um, it's got the uh, largest fraction. <laughs> yeah, well, you so you spotted that B is a large fraction yeah. and another B to A and B to C essentially have a very similar relative volatility, which are basically the two things we're looking for when we think of the prefractionator. So yeah, so we could use the prefractionator to separate A, B, and C. So there's two choices when we come to think about using a prefractionator with this sequence. So we also have the component D. So do we have our prefractionator to basically separate A, B and C, D or do we try and remove our component D first and then just take in our A, B, and C into our prefractionator arrangement. Okay, so where could you see advantages of potentially separating component D first? So in the heuristic rules, are there any advantages of potentially separating D first? So if we, if we separate D first, our fractions of A and C i.e. what comes out the top and what comes out the bottom of our prefractionator, our fractions are more similar in terms of their total flow rate. OK? 
okay, which is good for a prefractionator having a balanced up and down flows. Okay, so that might be an advantage of taking out D first. Is there a disadvantage of trying to separate our component D first? Is there, so is there an advantage of using our prefractionator like this and then taking our CD and splitting that afterwards? So is there a heuristic rule that's an advantage for this design? So what do we know in terms of the relative volatilities for all our components? So that's the relative volatility for C to D. So that's the most difficult separation. And from the heuristic rules for simple distillation columns, we know that we want to separate the most difficult separation last. Okay? So although potentially there's some advantages to this one, the heuristic rules for the simple columns, which we don't just throw away because we also allow complex columns into our design, but the heuristic rules for simple columns might point out to you that this design being the most optimal for our prefractionation. Okay? So if we were to just look at our If we just look at our four components going in, and we just think back to our simple distillation column rules and what we did yesterday, one of the first sequences we identified was that if we go down a direct sequence route, that was quite successful because that actually met a lot of the heuristic rules. Okay? So that would mean getting rid of our A component first. Okay? So we would just be left with B, C, and D. So is there now a method to separate B, C, and D potentially using our thermally columns? The middle component is about 30% of our feed. Yeah. There's more of our top component than our bottom component. So that's pointing towards a, a side rectifier as a potential. Okay? <clears throat> so in that case, we will potentially try a side rectifier because we're now because we've moved A, we're now meeting quite a lot of the criteria for a side rectifier. So potentially that could be a, a good option for our system. Okay? However, there is a third option where some of the criteria is met. Okay? So if we look at our feed components, we can see that D is a very is a minor component in our system, right? It's five or less percent. So if we've got a component that's at one of our ends that's five or less percent, we can think, well maybe we can, instead of actually having any kind of two distillation column couple design, maybe we can just get away with a side stream. Okay. So if we were to have a look at doing a side stream where D was our bottom product, we know that for our middle stream, for our actual side stream coming off, we would want that to be greater than about 50%. Okay? So as the next component is C, we couldn't have C by itself. But we could have a C, D, uh, we could have B and C taken off as that side stream because, in total, that is greater than fifty percent. Okay? And because B and C are more volatile than our bottom component, 
then and our bottom component is the 5 percenter, and that immediately points us towards a vapor side stream, okay? I.e. a side stream below the actual feed. And then, of course, we could just separate B and C in their own simple distillation column afterwards, okay? So the only potential difficulty with this design is that what we really need is we need the rel ideally the relative volatilities between here is greater than that between here. Okay? So we know that our relative volatility between A and B is 2.33 and that between B and D is 2.33 times 1.148 so I'll let you work that out just slightly larger than 2.3 so that bit's met though the only difficulty is potentially that relative volatility between C and D because we still have to do that separation in the bottom of our column However, because we're, say, like 90 to 95 percent of the way there with matching the criteria for the heuristics, it might be worth actually putting that design as well and trying that one out because that could turn out to be quite popular. Okay? <coughs> 